Welcome to Perry. My name is Mike Bellamy. I run a glamp ground and tiny house village on the edge of town here in Perry on Silver Lake. And uh, for the next few weeks, we're going to be interviewing different businesses from around Perry in hopes that uh, the growing number of tourists coming to our area might find an interest and stop by and say hello. So uh, with no further ado, I'd like to talk about the creamery that we have in town. So with no further ado, maybe you guys could tell me a little bit about your role at the creamery and how things got started. So we are the owners. We have a dairy farm in Warsaw, which produces the milk that we use to make our own grass-fed artisan cheese here in Perry. We make our cheese in the French Alpine style, which means the recipes came from the Alps region of France. We have our Silver Lake cheese that's similar to a Gruyere. It's nice buttery, nutty flavor, of course, named after the lake here in town. Uh, the other three we make are raclette style, so they're very nice for melting. They're called Underpass Happy Accident and Underpass Reserve, and they're all pretty yummy, we think. We'd like people to come over and try them. You want to tell me a little bit about Underpass Cheese? That's sure. got a catchy name. Our Underpass Cheese, uh, the name came from an underpass that we built under 20A about 20 years ago to get our cows across the road. Um, that was kind of a quagmire for six years where we crossed over the road and finally uh, went through the whole process of DOT and built the underpass under the road. So we felt with that monumental uh, project that we ought to at least name a cheese after that. Everybody can maybe ask the question why it's named that. <laughs> so as you're driving from Buffalo towards uh, Silver Lake and Letchworth Park, and if you find yourself on 20A between Warsaw and Perry Center, look for the cows going underneath the highway. It's pretty unique. I haven't seen another one like that anywhere nearby. And uh, speaking of unique, just uh, today when I was driving in for this interview, I saw what looks like a red vending machine in, in front of your shop. What's that all about? Yes, when we visited France while we were doing some research for our cheese project, and we came upon some cheese vending machines over there, and we thought, well, that would be cool to bring something like that to Perry. So it's fully stocked with all of our cheeses, as well as a few other little candy and specialty items, and it's become a real tourist attraction for people visiting the area. They can use it 24-7 when we're not there at the store. No one's tried to steal the cheese machine? No. <laughs> <laughs> and what what are some of the other uh, unique items that you can get in the in the store? Because I, I was in there and you have sandwiches, you have gift items. We have some gift items. We have some t-shirts, some bandanas. We have uh, just in the past year we started carrying some bulk candies and snacks. We find that they're very popular with people that have been hiking in Letchworth Park or just out for a Sunday afternoon ride. They get the munchies for the ride home, so they mm -hmm. buy some of those things. Okay. The we other... have ice cream from Yummies in Warsaw ah. and various meat products. You have to want to have cheese and crackers. We have crackers. We have meats if they want to do some sort of a charcuterie board when they get home. When you drive by, the thing that catches your attention is it looks like it's built into a hill. But I remember it was a fairly flat field not so many years ago. What's, how did that happen? So when we decided to uh, build the plant, we wanted everything to be pretty traditional. And so, obviously, the cheeses are, we don't do anything. It's like they made cheese 200 years ago. But part of the process of a really good cheese is stability in the aging process. So we, you could argue it either way, but we just opted to go with uh, almost like a, a, a cement locker with covered with dirt for stability and temperature and humidity. And it's, it's a really appealing thing especially when you come in the building to see the cheese aging on the shelves inside this cave. And we often get temp or questions about if it's a real cave. It's not, but it certainly has that appeal and look to it. And I'm sure it helps the quality of the cheese. When I was in there, I went up to the second floor and the first time I was in the building, I didn't realize that you have almost like a cathedral style event center upstairs with a timber frame. Was that, um, Tell me about how that came about. Like, where did you find those massive timbers, and and whose idea was it, and uh, how did you come up with the the engineering design for that building? Okay, so part of the kind of the goal of the of the whole overall project was was to ha display the wood from our own forest on our farm, and that's where it came from. It's red oak, post and beam, and uh, 
rafters or hemlock, which is very prevalent in our woodlot. And we had some woods that needed to be logged because there was a lot of understory that needed to be released. So um, I'm a woods fanatic. Uh, my man cave is a 600 acre woodlot. <laughs> and I wanted everybody to enjoy wood as much as I did. So that's why we went with the post and beam. Um, and it kind of helps with the... Um, with a destination uh, for people to come and look at. It's built like all the old gamble roof barns that were very prevalent in the county. And so um, that's kind of what we came up with. So when I heard that there was a creamery coming to town, I'm thinking, you know, small scale kind of, uh, you know, like the, when I hear somebody tells me they have a, uh, a sugar shack and they're making maple syrup, it's usually quite small. So. Uh, when I first heard there was a creamery coming to town, I didn't realize the scale of it um, and, until I walked in and looked through the glass panels to see your factory equipment. So um, give me an idea of the scale of the operation, in term, whether it's employees or output or size. It's, I mean, it's massive. Yeah, that was, you know, there was a process that we went through to get to this point. And at first we were looking at small scale um, operation, but... The more we looked at it, and the more we studied it, we wanted the facility to have a, a future. And most of the small creameries that are built are, are a one-time deal. The people who want to do it and have the drive to do it, do it. And then it's not large enough for a company to come in and continue on. Where we, hopefully, uh, when we're done, that somebody will buy this and will continue on, hopefully making the type of cheese we make. And there would be a future to it. And so um, we had the wherewithal to, to borrow the capital. And so um, it also went along with all the other ideas of the timber frame and a destination. And so it kind of fell into place. It really wasn't, we didn't have a big grand plan. It just kind of all fell into place. And that's kind of what came out of it. Sometimes you hear that it's difficult to do business in New York. My experience has been almost the opposite in the in the glamp ground that I started, the IDA helped me get all sorts of grants and local zoning and planning were very supportive. Um, how has your experience been as a, as, a, as a family starting a business here? I think, I think Perry is very unique and it's very welcoming to bringing new businesses in. It recognizes the survival of the town. Um, we started in a, in a, a town that was neighboring and I think it's more common, too, that most of these small communities don't want to see any change. And when you go through the process of approvals, you really get roadblocked by these boards. And that's kind of the experience we were having. And so there were three individuals that were our movers and shakers in the village of Perry that called me and said, if, if, if you're having problems or <laughs> feel the need... Come see what we have to offer, and uh, that's what I did. I took them up on the offer and came and visited them and really had that positive attitude that something's going to happen here when we give it a shot, and that's really the way it went. And all through the build, um, when we had to deal with, like, the superintendent of public works and things, he was five minutes there on the spot trying to help us out or figure out what we needed to do, and that's makes a huge difference because it's difficult enough to to have a project like that and then have roadblocks that you know the local government's kind of putting in your in your way for what need and so that was it, it's encouraging now that we've uh, we're starting to discuss a little bit more about Perry and what it's like to do business here um, as a tourist that is find that kind of discovering Perry for the first time maybe they're they drove through Geneseo and Mount Morris, came into the park. They're hanging out in the park for a couple days, want to explore something new, check out our side of, of Letchworth Park. What are they going to find in Perry? What do you think the, some of the impressions will be? Uh, definitely come to the creamery. There's uh, the Charcoal Corral if they yeah. want to go to a drive-in movie or get some ice cream or play mini golf. There's uh, a nice brewery in town, the Silver Lake Brewing Project. That's always a fun place to go. There's now a new little store you could buy meat called the Butter Meat Company right here on Main Street. Uh, there's a bookstore if you're into looking at things like that. 
Uh, there's a number of places, good places to eat. How many of your customers do you think are in town for, be, I'm sorry, let me say that again, is, um, I want to ask the question, if you look at your customer base, how many are local, meaning Western New York, versus Letra State Park? Uh, we get a lot of people from Western New York that are out for a Sunday afternoon drive or a drive through the countryside, and they see our sign and they just pop in and see what we've got. We get a number of people that have either camping at the park or camping at one of the local campgrounds, and they somehow hear about us and come and see what we've got in our store. We get people from the city of Buffalo that maybe have read an article in the newspaper about us, and so they come out for the day to check us out. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, uh, last but not least on this, before we go to the information on the historic record, um, I wanted to ask if, um, when you have friends and family that come to town, you know, what do you show them that's really special and kind of local knowledge that maybe the, the tourists don't initially know about? You know, the, the number one place, uh, cause we've had a number of, um, people from out of town come visit, visit us cause we're kind of a kind of on, sometimes on the edge of, of technology, the way we dairy. Lectures Park is always the number one on the list. Um, it's, to me, I, you know, every time I go there, I still am in awe at, uh, at the, of the scenery of it and the depths. And the, I just, I like that kind of thing anyways, but um, that's always the number one thing on our list. Agriculture in our county um, was another one. Because uh, most of the people that came to visit us were related in some type of form in the agricultural business. Um, good places to eat in Perry, I think. Mm -hmm. I think, as a rule, um, we have a number of them, and and it's always, you know, I always was raised with a tr tradition of having a good conversation over good food was always part of the of having company and I think that kind of helps it. Just, I wanted to just generally ask you, I don't know if we'll fit it in or not, but um, you know, in, in the dairy business, you always complain, you always hear the complaints about how, you know, international supply and demand can affect the price of a gallon of milk and in the last few years it seems like dairy farmers have, have uh, been struggling. Is it any better in the, in the cheese business or are, are, the, are they linked directly? I think it's even more uh, difficult in the cheese business because our particular type of cheese is uh, very similar to Euro European imports and um, a lot of those cheeses that come in from overseas are on some type of subsidized programs uh, to keep the landscape in Europe looking rural and farm-like and we don't have that edge and so we're always constantly trying to figure out how to, how to get cheese in people's mouths. Most people are into cheddars and um, have no clue that there's any other style of cheese in the world. And so we spend a lot of time talking one-on-one. -on -one. And that's why our store works so well. Um, we can at least get, get a, two minutes of a person's life and get them interested, get the cheese in their mouth. and, and most of the time, they will buy, and I, I hope it's not to, to please us. I hope it's because it's good, and but you know we we are getting repeat customers, and it's it's a slow process, much slower than we envisioned. And if you have a financial institution helping you out, they want they want to see faster progress also. So um, it's certainly a a very difficult thing. Really, the local dairy business has really not much relation on, okay. on what we do as far as cheese. I mean, 2% of our milk comes off our farm, goes into our cheese, the rest goes to Batavia. And so, um, you know, the, the name of the game is to make lots of milk as cheap as you possibly can. And that's really the opposite direction of what we're trying to do with our cheese. Gotcha. That's that's good insight. So, um, tell me a little bit about the story behind your business. I, I know you've been in um, agriculture and a large dairy farm over towards Warsaw for many years. Um, how did you make the jump into a creamery? <laughs> well, Gary and I started farming back in 1981, 40 years ago, with 18 cows and 100 acres. 
and throughout the years we had to expand the dairy farm in order to, you know, make enough money to support and raise five children. And we acquired more acres of land and more cows and we built barns and then we started grazing. And now we're at the point where our children are very interested in the dairy industry and they want to play a more of a role than just, you know, having dad tell them what to do every day. So we decided to step aside, build the creamery, and let the next generation run the cows and the crops. Gotcha. All right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, how many years ago was that, that you made the decision and started breaking ground and planning for the what has now become the, the creamery? Uh, 2015, May 5th, my birthday, we started the actual, the actual construction of, of the creamery. Um, easy to remember. And then a year to date, we started making cheese. Um, but the planning stage was probably at least three to four years prior to that to, to building the plant. Not, not as you see. I mean, we went through a number of ideas and uh, threw that out. That's no good. And it took us a number of years to decide which cheese we wanted to make. So, wow. All right. Um, if if we can skip ahead a little bit, we've talked a lot in the in the session about. How you got here? Tell me where where it's going. Like, what's the the five year, the ten year plan? People of Perry want to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, um, I know it's it's good business to have um, five and ten year goals. Uh, we're pretty long in the tooth. Um, we're in our mid sixties. Um, we obviously aren't interested in slowing down. Uh, you know, one of my goals was, you know, to stay active and engaged and it certainly has done all of that. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I feel fortunate that I have my health, but I was able to, to display wood in a, in a grand way that, you know, something yeah. I really like. Another one is food. My wife is an excellent cook and we make really good cheese. I mean, I, I'm not just patting myself in the back. It's head and shoulders over a lot of like, I figure this run of the mill commodity cheese. And I think hopefully there'll be a legacy that will continue on after us, that this cheese will continue. And when you see Silver Lake cheese, you'll know exactly where it came from mm -hmm. and what it tastes like. And hopefully that will stay with Perry. Gotcha. Um, Perry, we're blessed to have Letra State Park in our backyard, just a couple miles as the crow flies. How important is the Letra State Park tourist base to your particular base? I'm sorry. How important is the Letra State Park tourist base to your particular business? Oh, I, I, to me, it's huge. Um, 80, per, 80 to 90 percent of our business is Letra Park or people coming upstate from downstate, especially from pandemic because um, they can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's all, this is going to change. But, um, so, and those are the type of people who have the income or a base or, that can afford our cheese. We're a little upper scale in price, but also appreciate our cheese. And so, um, I think it's very important. I think um, if we didn't have Lectures Park, I think we'd be dead in the water at this point. And we really, as business owners, really need to build on that as much as we can. Um, so Mike and I were talking before we came in, some of the ideas that we have are trying. And I think, um, I hope um, it gets around the word that they could try some of those things. Yeah, on that note, one of the reasons I set up my shop in, in Perry was that uh, it's just so easy to talk to other business people, you know, Everyone has the mayor's phone number. You can call and ask yeah. about policy and what, what's the strategic plan for Main Street. Right. Um, so, and we're seeing more and more, you know, small, medium-sized companies come to Perry. You know, we have outfitters now and various um, uh, dining establishments. But <clears throat> let's look at someone that's maybe just out of high school or just out of college, you know, wants to be their own boss, start their own business, to start their own business. Um, is there anything that... that uh, you've learned over the years in running different businesses that, that you would pass on to a budding entrepreneur looking to do business in, in Perry in particular? Follow your dream. If you've got an idea and you really, really think it's great, 
you know, get it out there, give some people a chance to listen to your story, get some support from the locals, go for it. How long be after you had opened the doors on the creamery did you realize that the dream was going to work? Oh, was it was it the first, was it right away? You're like, oh, we, we nailed it. It was a home run. Oh, or, oh, I mean, some days you still question it, whether we nailed it. I th you know, I think people recognize the potential here in Perry, and I think the, the local, the mayor and, and the local board are are young of the young age, and I think there's there could be a really good vibe. It's it's kind of it takes a long time to build that. It, it died in a very slow process, and it's going to come back in a slow process. And if it goes, if it comes back slow. It will stay. If it comes fast, it'll it'll leave fast. So, I mean, a good example is Butter and Beef. She's a young gal that um, very worldly. Um, she she recognized the potential here, and and really, I mean, there's some things that happened with the buildings that um, local government has gave people some breaks for rent and ownership, mm -hmm. which all helps. Yeah. And you got you got to keep these things going, otherwise they just fall apart on you, and it's the end of the story. There's thousands of small towns in America that are just mm -hmm. drying up and blowing away, and there's a lot of competition to get good people to come to a village like this and give it a shot. So I think, um, like you, uh, Perry, especially Rick Hauser, a lot of credit. Yeah. For, yeah, now that we've talked about uh, Perry where we are today, and you know from being in agribusiness for so long, you mentioned how Perry, uh, our downtown, there's an ebb and flow, and you know back when the knitting mills were here, and people talk about the old days of Perry in the 50s, how great it was, and, and then when I was uh, you know in high school in the, in the 80s, and um, I left off to college in the 90s, part of, most of Main Street was pretty rough. Yeah. You know, people weren't proud to say, they, hey, they're from Perry. Um, and so we lost the knitting mills, but now there's high tech business. There's lots of, um, you know, on, on your way out towards Perry Center, all the, um, like the collection agencies and the uh, internet based service um, companies that really could be anywhere in the world, but they, they chose Perry for a reason. I think maybe quality of life. So, anyways, uh, I'm getting off topic, but my question is you've seen um, good times and bad times at Perry, and I think we're on the upswing. Where do you think things are going in, in 10 years? If someone is, is considering starting a business in Perry, you know, is this a flash in the pan, what we've got going on on Main Street and tapping into Letchworth, or is there a trajectory that the, that the, um, the village is on, you know, as a, as a local and that has seen all sides of it? I, I, that's a tough one because it could turn any time. It's a very delicate thing. And I, I see it as very encouraging if we can, if Rick wants to stay in there and a few key people that make it happen, just to keep the momentum and, and moving along in a, in a good positive forward, it will happen. I, I mean, it won't be the boom that it once was, you know, just because of transportation and all those things that have came along and make people go to the city for the smallest item. But, I mean, um, you, you I talk, think potentially it has. I, I think the potential's there. I see a little bit more all the time. You know, you still have some starts that fall away, but um, I think the potential's there. It's, it's just one of those long haul things that will, will take time. What What make, keeps me optimistic about Perry is that a lot of the new businesses that are starting are insulated from Amazon. You know, craft cheese are, are is not something that someone can purchase on Amazon. If, if you're selling a, a pen, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to lose to Amazon every time. So when we yeah. focus on tourism, you know, food and beverage, outdoor recreation, um, high-end, authentic local food, it, it gives, gives me hope that we can kind of reposition the economy. Um, speaking of hope, now that we're almost, knock on wood, out of the, the COVID drama <laughs> that has held us back for so many, for almost uh, over a year now, yeah. how did you guys survive COVID? You know, what? How how did it impact your business, and how did you survive? Because we we've lost a number of businesses in Perry and across Western New York that didn't make it through this tough year. Um, that's a real tough call. Um, deep pockets, I think, and you have to reinvent yourself with with 
with different items. Um, I know we have. Um, we went into a different direction of working with more wineries mm -hmm. in a smaller format of cheese and fruits and nuts. I mean, that's been really pretty big for us. Um, I think it's really easily easy to get into a rut and, and, and if you keep thinking about it, it can really bring you down. I think you have to be in a, pro a positive frame of mind all the time. If you're around people who are negative, don't be around them. Be around people who are positive and aren't letting them get let them, let them get it down. Let let yourself get down. Mm -hmm. um, I went to hundreds of farm markets all last summer, and we were, were scheduled to do something similar this year. I didn't see a lot of change in the farm market traffic. In fact, mm -hmm. in fact, I saw a ten percent rise in sales. So as a whole, I think if you have a good product and, and are good to the people, and we had some breaks. We had the Gusto Buffalo News do a big article on us. Okay. It was huge. I mean, our business tripled within days after that hit the press. Okay. And it was called like day trips or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And those are the kind of things, uh, I mean, it didn't cost us anything. I spent half a day with a guy, and um, but, you know, I really had to put a positive spin on that when he was there. And um, those are the lucky breaks that, by the grace of God, it just happened. Mm -hmm. And you, you really have to be, you know, in a good frame of mind to, to, to take it on and, and propel it, you know, in a positive way. Yeah, good, good advice. Stay positive. Um, speaking of staying positive, um, how do you think Perry could attract more? It's a two-part question. First is, how can Perry, as the leadership of town, the mayor, the planning board and such, what, what could they do? What could the leaders of our village and town do to attract more tourists? And then the follow-up question, do you have any suggestions on what they could do to attract more businesses to make it even easier for people like yourselves to set up shop here? Well, there's a couple. Well, there's a couple questions there, but uh, number one, I think once you get a little buzz of, of business rolling along, it's pretty easy to get another little one yeah. on board to kind of come in mm -hmm. and try something. Um, with like the rent rates of, of startups here, it's really reasonable. I mean, you can't go anywhere else. Definitely a challenge as far as traffic coming yeah. in the door. I mean that's that's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to Mike about it, and yeah. uh, billboards are not big in New York State, but um, there is a lots of traffic that travels between Toronto and New York City that are not just looking at their phone to find small businesses and towns yeah. that they're going by. You need something to catch their eye, and. I think you know the town should maybe try a couple billboards. Um, it's expensive, but most advertising is. But if it works, it's not that expensive. Um, if it doesn't work, well, that's another story. Advertising is very expensive, and you know to see if it's if it's if it works. You know, mm -hmm. you know that's the tricky part, and that's kind of Facebook is definitely great. It's cheap, but it doesn't catch all ages. I mean, that, that group age group from let's say forty-five to seventy, mm -hmm. you missing out. Most of those, I mean, they're on maybe on Facebook. They're not on it all the time, and those are the people that, that have a ready available income that yeah. are willing to spend a few extra dollars on a small town like ours. Do you think that uh, if you looked at a a, a weekend during the summer, mm -hmm. um, that folks find you? Before they get in their car and leave Buffalo and Rochester, or they find you after they're they're in Wyoming County and they're looking for stuff to do it next to the park. At what point does Perry need to get in front of them? You know, how do we get in their consideration set? Uh, I'm still on the bid bo uh, billboard kick. Yeah. Um, a lot of people going down 20A. 
as anybody that lives do, in your yeah. Perry Center will, will mention. I mean, that's a process to get on a billboard. Um, we were lucky enough to own land to put the billboards on along 28. Not everybody's that lucky. You want to rent some? <laughs> <laughs> you I want to get in the billboard I have business? To get another, I have to get another <laughs> permit that doesn't allow for, for cell phone businesses. I can't put another business on my billboard. I have to go through another process. Well, that's probably a, that's probably a Wyoming County thing, not a Perry. A Perry. Uh, uh, it goes by township. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll edit that out. But the commercial billboards like Lamar, mm -hmm. you know, and there's quite a few of them around. Pricey, but they're effective, I think. Yeah, you nailed you you nailed it on the head. The forty five to seventy year olds that are out enjoy the car yes. ride, looking for. Um, to arrive someplace that's maybe off the beaten path, the sign can do a lot of, um, can be effective. The other hand, you have the millennials that are on their phone all the time, and if you're not on the Google map or showing up in the um, your Instagram, you might not find them. So it's tough to be in Perry because we have to go after both. both Two thirds sides. of our business is that age group, is that 45 to Okay. 70. Yeah, know, know your customer and, yeah. and milk it. Another key thing is to, and we hit on it a little bit, but we didn't go down that road very far, is to find unique products that people can't find anywhere else. Okay. Where they'll pay an extra few dollars for it, mm -hmm. to try it, or at least. That's a tough one to, uh, to find authentic products that maybe are local made or mm -hmm. have a source here, you know. Um, that's... Part of the challenge. Well, when you're the factory, it's obvious that it's, right. it's made here, not imported from Asia. You, you, that's well, we not going to happen in like, your business. We kind of, in our store, we try to find unique items. You know, we don't have a lot of items. But we have, in our store, we're trying to find, have items that you cannot find anywhere else. Oh, Beyond Cheese. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. You know, like we have Yummy's Ice Cream. Well, mm -hmm. there's only at Daryl's, and you can get a cone. Yep. Um... We just call her up and she said, well, you know, I don't have hardly any wholesale accounts. Yeah, Cherry like graduate as well. Yeah. Yep, and we get a fair amount of traffic from that. Um, Wilson's Meats, we have those in our store. Okay. They're not a huge company. They don't have a lot of exposure, but they have high quality meats. And, um, you, you know, you have to find the, like the sausages, the hot stuff that seem to appeal okay. to people, especially the younger crowd. Um, those are the kind of products you get. I mean, they're here, but you got to go find them and, and, and try to get them in your store. How do you keep a pulse on what the customers want? Do you use surveys, or is it oh, when they come right. in and sit down, you, you talk to them for two minutes and kind of get a feel for it? How, how did you know? You know obviously, it's, you can guess that the customer base is 45 to 70, but how do you know, you know where they're coming from or what, things, what types of products they, they might be interested in? Uh, we, I always, every customer that I wait on, and I know that Betty waits on, I ask them where they're from. Okay. And what they're doing that day. All right. You know, because I'm cutting cheese, and you got to kill the time, you know, <laughs> to make feel people feel comfortable because they get awkward about it. All right. Um, and the other thing, I mean, items, that's a tough one. You yeah. just don't know. Um, I know Wilson's, we've done business with Wilson's for 30 years. Okay. So I knew their, their product was a really good product. And we tried like one or two items of theirs, and they were pretty good. And then we tried some more, and it got better. And that's kind of what, what you need to do. Um, we have lots of chocolates in our store. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> and that's an interesting fact, because I had a couple in the store, this is just for talking yeah. I had a couple in our store yesterday or the day before. Her, their son, works for a company down, I think, it, in the Delaware area, where the cocoa bean comes in in bulk. Okay. And she was telling that they didn't even know that we had a pandemic as far as business. She says that business has just kept kept yeah. right on going. Because it's passion, or not passion, but comfort food. Oh, okay, sure. And so, I mean, that was kind of uh, a lucky hit for us to, to do that. And Betty likes to fuss with that stuff. Because you have to buy it bulk and break it down. Yeah. And so that that's helped us a lot. Um, people, you know, like, you know, another thing, people, not a lot, but a number of people, 
Is there anything else upstairs that we could look at? You know, like, oh, I, yeah. Like an Amish store that would have, you know, like, I don't want to say trinkets because it downgrades it, but those types of items. Yeah. The, the, I'm not sure what the price point would be. And well, you've value. got the space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you've got the space up there. Are, so um, are, do you offer tours on a regular basis? I mean, everyone likes to yeah. peek in there. And I know when I bring friends and families, they're like, can we get on the other side of the glass? Yeah. Uh, we don't bring them to the plant because of, of food safety. So the closest um, you look through the window. Through the window, if but you're a there... special, uh, um, a special, I would say uh, a client. We will take you through. We'll suit you up. <laughs> All right, but how about a um, maybe a, a guided introduction to the process? Um, you know, many of the, the now that people are coming to Letchworth and staying for two, three days rather than driving in and out, they're looking for something educational yet fun for the children. Like the uh, Girl Scouts that are coming. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, do you do you have a formal system for? We do. It's it's kind of rigorous, and we keep it that way just so we can keep the naysayers um, at bay. Okay. It's ten dollars a person. Um, it's over an hour, a minimum of six people. Okay. And you got to call ahead and schedule, and then I check like only a few days of the week that I do it. So okay. It's. It It'll make available. it real easy. The other thing we've done, and we're still in the process of, of the technology part, we bought a big, like, 70-inch screen TV. Okay. And the extension, Erie County Extension, um, did a 20-minute thing about our cheese mm -hmm. farm, and, and we got to get that on the TV where we wouldn't charge for that. People could sit and, okay. and watch it. We'd start it. And, I just like to go up there and look important. at the woodwork. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how how about um, so we got the tours? Oh, so maybe maybe we could cut this into the the video. But um, let's say that the uh, uh, family over in Letchworth, it's a rainy afternoon, and they're not going to go for a hike. They've seen the falls already. They've come over to Perry maybe to get the bite to eat. Um, how much time could they spend in your shop? What could they do from things like maybe a tasting for the for the family, and perhaps if they catch a catch the tour? Certainly, there's a lot of um, historic photographs upstairs that I remember. Yes, what 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 kind of uh, time should a family allocate to spend with you? If they do a tour, we get an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, um, and that's the other thing that you and I talked about is having a little map it. People, we get often questions about what can we do here in Perry, and if we could just have a one-page map and show maybe the Splash Park and the Corral and butter and beef and the the wine, the beer, sort of yeah. brewing and the ration bar and the restaurants. People often ask mm -hmm. where can we eat because they're there in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, and maybe have a menu on the map. Um, it would be very helpful. Yeah, you know, Wyoming County Tourism does a pretty good job of promoting the county, but as business people here, we need to think, all right, now that once yeah. they're in town, how do we get them to stay as long as possible? Right. So your, you know, your I can tell them to right go down here, make a left, make a right. Yeah. And, you know, they're probably lost time they leave the, the driveway, but if you can have a map where you can just circle it. Yeah, I remember Sandy Schneibel had made one for the Perry Main Street Association mm -hmm. like six years ago, and, and uh, that was also about the time that... Yeah, everyone was thinking it's got to go digital. We got to be online. And, but you're right. The 45 to 70 year olds they would prefer a map, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a big customer base to yeah. you need to think of. You know, but, we have young couples coming with young kids. They're camping yeah. at Lexworth. Yep. You know, let's say it's a summer day and it's hot. Okay, you know, I had a couple say, "What can we do with our kids?" And I like, splash bar. Yeah. Where's that? You know? <laughs> Have you seen the Village Beach, the renovations? Um, yeah, that's, that's another thing. Be really nice. Yeah. I sent some, tried to send some people there. I don't know if they found it or not. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, you know, more and more, you're seeing barn weddings and okay. um, destination weddings, uh, especially in and around Letchworth Park. Um, you have a, ma a magnificent facility. Mm -hmm. um, is there an opportunity for guests to rent space? There is. We hired a young fellow. Uh, he's a he's a, na a Perry native, uh, Josh Wilkett, and his mom. Um, he's a professional chef. He used to cook for Live Nation, and has lots of experience for large events and, and good food. And so he he's our our event coordinator. Somebody calls and wants to know about okay. a date or a, a, a 
menu or the cost, he takes care of all that for us. We can fit up to 150 people in our space. It's air conditioned, it's heated, there's four okay. bathrooms all under roof. And so, I mean, it's, it's really underutilized, it's kind of a shame, but um, it looks like a barn, but not as rustic. Yeah. And the lighting in there is, can be really terrific at certain times of the day. Um, the sound is, you can hear a pin drop in that place. And so, um, and Josh can fix you up any kind of meal that you want, depending on what you like. So you do the catering in house. We can we didn't at first because they didn't have anybody on staff and okay. And Josh and I teamed up, and so he 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 can fill that void for us. Do you have a liquor license as well? Josh does that. Um, wow. Um, Thank you for watching the Welcome to Perry video series. I hope you'll join me in taking a look at the East Hill Creamery, and we'll see you around Perry. I'm Mike. See you next time.